I'm Steve from This Week With Cars, and this is my 1961 Austin Healey Sprite, and this car could be yours. It is for sale on eBay right now, and I will put a link to the auction in the description below. By serial number, this car is one of about the last 4,000 Mark I Sprites built. This car was built in late 1960 and would not have arrived in America and been sold until 1961. And it is typical in America for foreign cars to be registered under the year of which they were first sold. Normally I would take these cars for a drive, but today it is barely above zero degrees Fahrenheit and I would definitely get wind chill if I took it out, not to mention the salt and the dirt on the roads right now. I do have a little bit of footage of this car while I was working on it, so I'll put that at the end of the video, but I will not be able to take this for a drive today. I will do a cold start for you, as well as a tour, both right here and on the lift to show you the condition of the car. This car is one of six Mark I Sprites that I found in a line in a barn, and I've been referring to this one as Barn Sprite number two. So if you wanna see previous videos on this car, look up Barn Sprite number two on my YouTube channel. This is a great car and would be a great project for someone, so let's take a look at it. On the front, you can see it does have the optional front bumper. However, most of the cars that came to the United States were equipped with the front bumper. The Sprite emblem on the bonnet is there. However, it has become cracked and does need replaced. I don't know how well you can see it on the camera, but there is a little bit of crazing in the paint. You can see it well right there. However, from a distance, the paint looks very well. There are some spots here and there where the paint is flaking off here and on one of the rocker panels over on this side. You can see it right there. Continuing around the front, there is some blemishes here in the top of the grill as well as a blemish in the paint right here. There's also one spot on the middle of the bonnet right there where the paint has started to flake off a little bit. Everything looks quite a bit better here on the passenger side. There is no flaking of the paint on the bottom of the rockers like there was on the driver's side. This car does wear its original wheels and hubcaps. Along the back, you see the original gas filler cap, and these are glass as was equipped originally. It has the original gold Sprite emblem. There is some flaking of the paint here on the plinth for the license plate lamp. It has an original style exhaust fitted, however, the exhaust is old. It's rusted up near where it attaches to the engine and should be replaced. These tires are the ones that were fitted to the car when I got it, so I would recommend putting new tires on it before you drive it on the road. The top of the boot looks good. There is crazing in the paint. You can see a little bit right there. However, there is no chipping. I can't take it for a drive today, but we can try a cold start on it. Get the choke pulled out. Hit the starter switch. Try it again. How it is, uh, if you can see that thermometer up there. It is less than 40 degrees Fahrenheit in here right now. Let's try it again. Car has good oil pressure. The tack does not work. It needs a new cable that runs to the generator. I also have for the car, the original jack and jack handle, the side curtains, the convertible top, and the convertible top bows. On the inside of the car, the only new parts are the shift knob. I did powder coat the uh, gear cover there and the oil and water gauge, that is new as well. So behind the seats, original rubber mat here and on the wheel wells, you see the condition of the trunk here. There is no mat from the hump back. That's just bare metal, painted metal there. Under the bonnet, I had the starter rebuilt. That's way down there. You can see the rebuilt starter down there. I did put on a new radiator cap 
The master cylinder is new, as well as the slave cylinder for the clutch. Of course, has a new battery and battery cables. The spark plugs are new, as well as the points and the distributor. I did replace those. And it also has a new rotor in the distributor. All of the coolant hoses have been replaced and I did have to put a water pump on it because the original one was leaking. So there is a new water pump in there as well. There is a bunch of wiring from the bonnet that still needs to be sorted out. I labeled what some of the wiring goes to. The regulator is not held on by anything, although it is wired up. The generator is not working. Needs the cable for the tack that comes off the back of it as well. Here's a look underneath the car. You can see someone has been jacking it up from that cross member there. I did put a new ground on it and you can see the new clutch slave there. I did put all new brake hoses on it. On the passenger side, I did replace the rear brake cylinder. That one was leaking, so I put a new one on there. Obviously the engine leaks oil. They all leak oil. If you buy this car, I would reseal the motor. You might want to do some other things as well. There has been a patch here in the floor. This is right under uh, the footwell for the driver. On the passenger side, actually looks pretty good there. Continuing back on the car, everything looks pretty stock back here. The car is missing the rear exhaust hanger back here. Behind the wheels, you can see someone has patched a sign in on that side. The other side is unpatched, but you can see a little bit of rust here in the corner. It's not actually too bad considering how old this car is. The rear spring mount areas are look to be in good shape and solid on both sides. There is a little bit of rust there in front of the rear tire. Here's a look at the wheel wells. The rocker panels seem to be in good shape. Bug eye number two. I 